All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell XPS 13 Plus 9320. All right, so first thing we got to do is remove all the screws from the bottom. Okay, it looks like this is held in with some T5 or Torx 5 screws. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a T5 screwdriver. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and remove all the screws from the bottom. I like to work on it with the hinges pointing away from me. Okay, so let's go ahead and face it this way. And then let's go ahead and remove all the screws. You want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got one on either side here, and then we got four towards the opening. <clears throat> all right. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their device as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and it allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue getting all these screws out. Oreo, stop trying to dig into your bed. <laughs> What's going on? All right, now that we got all the screws out, let's go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. So usually what I find works best in most cases is I start with my fingernails at the bottom here. Oh, it's turning itself on. But I'll start from the bottom there and then I'll push with my fingernails here. But in this case, this whole thing is a touchpad. So you want to be very careful pushing on that, okay? So you're, here you can see it's going into this um, menu. So we got to make sure to turn it off, okay? And you can see we can kind of pull this up, but again, this whole bottom part is like a touchpad, or it looks like one, so we got to be careful, all right? So I'm just pulling here. You can see I'm pushing down with my fingers and then pulling out with my thumb, and wow, that cover actually came off pretty nice. Okay, so here we go. This is what the inside looks like. It looks like it uses this as a clip mechanism, so there's not really much holding it except for these little side clips. Okay, they got all this foam stuff to kind of help guide the air, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we go. We'll take a look here. Let me get a thumbnail again. Okay, so here we go. Okay, the customer wants to see if their data is retrievable. Um, I'm kind of doubting it because it's just booting to that menu, basically saying that it can't see the drive. Okay. Oops, did I put that crooked? All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and remove it. First thing you wanna do, um, actually you don't need to do this, but uh, a lot of people like to be like, hey, you gotta remove the battery first. For the SSD, you actually don't need to do that, but I kinda wanna show what the battery uh, mechanism looks like anyways. We're using a PH0 or JIS0 screwdriver, okay? Oh, let me zoom in actually. Okay, after you undo that screw, you can see this is kind of coming up and it has a hook. So you kind of have to lift it and slide it over this way uh, because this little piece kind of hooks on underneath. Okay, so I'm assuming this is like a lift tab. Um, you can either use that or I just use my fingernails underneath and I just pull this up. Usually it helps to kind of go from a corner. So I'm going to go from the top corners here and then pull that up. And there you go. Uh, battery connector did disconnect very easily, just like that. It just basically hooks on like a Lego. Let me zoom back out here, <clears throat> and then let me show you the battery itself. It looks like we still need to use the PH0JS0 screwdriver, and there's four screws along the top, and then two screws on the bottom. So let's go ahead and remove all those. I'm just going to quickly show underneath here because this isn't really part of the repair. Usually I try and avoid extra steps just in case because you never know you can actually end up causing more damage. Sometimes the stuff isn't manufactured well and even just pulling a connector up sometimes the part that sticks to the board um, isn't soldered down well and it can rip off so you kind of want to be careful doing repairs and taking things out that you don't need to. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this other screw here. All right, I believe we got all the battery screws out. Let's go ahead and lift this up. It looks like there's no easy access point to get this out. So wherever you can lift it, I guess the connector, but be very careful. I'm just using it to lift a little. Now I can get under here and let's see, can we lift this out? Oh, there we go. It's kind of stuck down with something, but uh, there we go. Okay, and then it slides out. There are little hooks here, so you do have to slide this battery out this way. Um, <clears throat> this battery connector does seem to be part of the battery, so you don't replace that. 
and the battery model number is right here it's really hard to read that because of the light but it's a uh, MN79H all right MN79H there you go we'll set this aside um, and yeah okay so underneath here you can actually see this is the keyboard connector here um, it looks like there's some screws holding it but it's also hmm how does that work Okay, maybe the screws hold it in place from underneath, but then once you undo those screws, you can probably slide the keyboard out from the top. Let me see, just is that what it looks like? Yeah, I think you can, once you get those screws out, you can probably lift this side up and then slide it over this way. Um, I don't think you can slide it the other way because these tabs stick out into the casing. <clears throat> All right, here's the touchpad trackpad connector. It has a little flip latch <clears throat> covered by tape. Um, and let me see, there's a lot of little cables in here. Hmm, is that for the touchpad? There's a small cable here, probably also for the touchpad, and then you got this connecting it to the motherboard. Keyboard cables going to this board, and then you got the keyboard backlight cable here. There's a flip latch here, flip latch here, and then on this side, the flip latch is over here. Okay. <clears throat> and if you're wondering how I know which side the flip latch is on, if you look at these metal pins, they're extending into this white portion. That's how you know the flip latch is there. So you see how the pins are extending into the black portion? That's how you know the flip latch is there. Anyways, that connects the whole keyboard assembly to the motherboard here. There's some uh, little connectors here that connect to the bottom case and probably tells it that the case has been opened. Here's a speaker connector here. So you would grab the, if you have like some good needle nose pliers, you would grab the plastic portion and you kind of just wiggle it as you pull. That's the speaker. It doesn't look like it's held down with any screws or anything. So most likely there's some stretch release adhesive or something here. I don't see any tabs to release it. So I'm not gonna mess with that. There's another speaker connected there. This looks like the fan connector with the flip latch there. Okay, other fan connector here, <coughs> SSD right here, most likely M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Wireless card is soldered to the board here. <coughs> I hate how they're making everything soldered because these components fail. It's weird, the components fail, but then like the connections for these don't fail. So yeah, they should always make the stuff removable. All right, you got this connector here. I'm assuming that's for the power, no, the power button's on this side, right? Yeah. So I'm not too sure what that little cable's for. Doesn't have anything that tells me. Okay, um, all the USB-C ports are soldered to the motherboard. Uh, video, sorry, LCD, LVDS connectors here. Three screws and then three more screws holding this thing that kind of just holds all this cabling together. Um, it looks like a wireless antenna here and here. They're held in with screws as well. And the wireless antennas again connect to the wireless card there. All right, not really much else to look at here. So let's go ahead and remove the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. And then, yeah, we're gonna have to see what we can do. Um, I'm pretty sure the data has gone, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it just to let the customer know. All right, you can see after you remove the screw, you lift this up slightly and then you kind of wiggle and pull this back. Then we got the SSD here. This comes up slightly and then you kind of just wiggle and pull that back. So there's the M.2. PCIe NVMe SSD. It's a Samsung SSD. Oops, I should zoom out a bit more. All right, so I'm going to test the SSD real quick, and then, <clears throat> and then once I find out whether it's working or not, we'll put it back together. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back, and just like I thought, the SSD is toast. So we're just going to go ahead and put this back. I don't know why Samsung makes decent SSDs, but the ones that they sell to manufacturers to put into their laptops, I don't know, they're always like failing. All these, why do they do that? It's like gives them a bad name. Like if I always see these SSDs failing, I'd be like, don't get in a Samsung SSD, they always fail. <laughs> Anyways, aftermarket SSDs, I'm not affiliated or anything, but I found that the crucial ones tend to be best for the price and speed and everything. Um, and I, I don't know if I've even seen one fail yet. Anyways, we're going to get the battery back in, slide that down, and then click that back into place. I hope me mentioning that, mentioning that doesn't cause Crucial to be like, oh, let's up our prices or something. That would suck. So, yeah, please don't do that, Crucial. I'll end up not buying your SSDs anymore. <laughs> 
All right, anyways, you got to get this little hook down. Uh, let me see if I can show you close up of this. Okay. So if you see that little gap right in the board, you need to get that hook into there. So that hook will go on that. Okay. And I'll show you a side view so you can see it. But let me go ahead and get this screw in. Okay. And there you go. All right. You see that? It's hooking underneath the board right there. Okay. Anyway, so let's get the battery screws back in and then the bottom cover back on. And we're pretty much good to go. All right. Let's get the last few screws in here. Why did that feel weird when I was screwing it in? All right, well, that's good now. Okay. Get the four in, and yeah. That's pretty much all there is to this model. Uh, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their device as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, uh, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. Um, if you could subscribe to that one, I need to get that one to 1,000 subscribers. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. There's a little hair here. I'm going to try to keep it out. Be careful with grabbing stuff from behind this portion uh, because the LCD cable is exposed there, okay? And you don't want to damage that cable in there, okay? Anyways, very simple. We're going to now just put the, <coughs> put the T5 or Torx 5 screws back in. So you only need two screwdrivers to work on this, the T5 and the um, PH0 or JS0. I'm not sure if there's any hidden PH1, JS1 screws in there. Sometimes there are. Um, so if the screwdriver does seem loose when you go to work on it, um, you want to switch the screwdriver. Don't keep trying or you'll end up damaging the screw head and then you won't be able to get the screw out anymore. All right, so that's pretty much it. Again, you're welcome to stay as I get the rest of these screws back in. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, the battery will normally also on these newer models act as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. So don't be surprised if it takes a while for your computer to start up again. Um, there's no replaceable RAM on this, um, if you were wondering. Okay. And yeah. All right. So keep that in mind. If you go to power up your computer and it's like staying a black screen, usually that's because the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, whatever you want to call it, <coughs> is built into the main battery and it's basically doing a BIOS reset. Let's go ahead and see if it powers on without me even plugging it back in. Okay, I push the power button and oh, it actually booted up pretty quick. This boot will take longer than usual. Please wait. Oh, so it actually tells you here. Wow, that's good. Okay. Anyways, that's pretty much it. So normally it would just stay a black screen, but I guess now, I guess since people were doing that and they're like, oh no, it's broken. Maybe the... Uh, um, texts that work on it were saying, oh no, it's broken, it's black screen, and then people found out it was just the stupid BIOS loading up, um, but you can see how long it's taking, okay? So it's taking a long time. So just be patient. Normally, if you have an older or different model, it won't show the screen, it'll just be black, but there'll be some lights on. Again, just be patient, leave the computer alone, walk away, come back like an hour later if you're that worried. <laughs> Um, normally it comes on in like less than five minutes or so, but uh, sometimes it can take a long time or sitting there staring at it makes it feel extra long. So yeah, just walk away and come back and then it should be good. All right, that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye. Oh, and of course, right after I finished, it went to this. So it finished and now it says time of day is not set up. So basically that's because the BIOS reset. So you have to set the date and time again. Otherwise, it'll be wrong. All right, that's it. See you guys later. Bye.